Hi folks, welcome back to Finding Words Financial. This is Jason, how's it going today? I wanted to talk to you about a company, actually that's one of the largest auto producers on the planet and you may not have ever heard of it. The company is called Geely Automobile Holdings. Now if you're paying attention to the EV world and the revolution that we find ourselves in right now, which by the way, I think has reached a tipping point and there's no point in even resisting it right now. If you're one of those people that is resisting it, because I do talk to a lot of those folks who think that this EV thing is not going to happen. It's not just going to happen, folks. We are in the middle of the revolution. We've already passed the tipping point and uh, the internal combustion engine is on its way out, right? And in many ways in this revolution, China is leading the way in terms of money, manufacturing, and scientific resources that are committed to this revolution. So if you are familiar with all that, then you probably heard about the Chinese auto brand Geely, even though you may not be exactly clear on where it is they fit into the whole grand scheme of things when it comes to the EV revolution. So look guys, this is just a short YouTube video and I couldn't hope to do justice to everything that Geely does and all of Geely's ambitions in 20 minutes or less, but just understand this, they are in the thick of it, folks. Geely is one of about a half a dozen lesser known Chinese manufacturers that may not get the recognition in the West that they deserve, but they've developed themselves into powerful multinational corporations with thousands of employees, manufacturing facilities on multiple continents, and they spend hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars a year on research and development. Hey folks, this is just a reminder, but if this is the first time on the channel, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more content. Geely will end up playing a major role in what is to come in autonomous mobility and the electrification of transportation. Like another major company that we've explored on this channel, BYD, this company trades in two ways that are available in the United States. Geely trades under the ticker symbol G-E-L-Y-F and G-E-L-Y-Y. G-E-L-Y-F is an ordinary share, not an ADR or American depository receipt of Geely Auto Group that's traded on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. It's available over the counter in the United States and once again, that is not the ADR, the American depository receipt. G-E-L-Y-Y is the American depository receipt which also trades over the counter in the United States. Now one question that comes up pretty frequently with both BYD and Geely is which one should I buy, either the H share or the uh, ADR? Typically, I would recommend buying the ADR because there are just fewer barriers to do so. Uh, but a lot of those barriers that I'm thinking of really don't exist anymore. There used to be a lot of restrictions and fees associated with buying either security. But in the last decade or so, many of those barriers have disappeared as technology has improved. You should check with your broker before trading to see if there are any extra fees or restrictions. Now, theoretically, both securities may have different values, but they really shouldn't trade at a differential to each other, meaning that if one goes up by 10%, the other one should go up 10%, since they both represent shares of the same company traded on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Now, occasionally, of course, there is some difference between the two, but it's usually just temporary. One should note something rather odd though, that despite the size of this company, neither one of these securities trades at a tremendous volume on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is despite the fact that the company has a market cap of around $32 billion. That is something to consider before making a purchase. A robust trading volume gives me a lot more confidence that the market is pricing the stock appropriately. So who is Geely Automobile Holdings and why are they potentially such a big deal that I'm making a video for them on my channel? Well, actually guys, Geely isn't just potentially a big deal. It already is a big deal, of course, with that $32 billion market cap. Geely is a global automobile maker that owns several well-known brands such as Volvo, Proton, Lotus, Lincoln Company, and of course the Geely Auto brand. They're also a major shareholder in Daimler AG and they have joint ventures with several other auto producers and they make over one and a half million vehicles per year. The company was established in 1986 by business magnate Li Shufu who, like many Chinese business magnates, didn't start out that way. He's an interesting character with a background that I think most people would admire if you like stories about regular people who succeed by pulling themselves up by their bootstraps and by taking risks. Li Shufu founded Geely by borrowing money from family members and taking over a failing refrigerator manufacturer. Over the next decade, he built that failing business into a global enterprise with shrewd management and really an openness to new ideas and the willingness to evolve. The company began their march to greatness by selling inexpensive products to the domestic Chinese market in the early days and working their way up to more expensive manufactured items as time went by. 
Geely entered the transportation world when, in the 1990s, they took over a failing state-owned firm that manufactured motorcycles. They ended up turning that firm around and first produced a successful motorcycle line and then moved on to producing a small van. In 1999, a truly remarkable thing happened. To my knowledge, Geely became the first privately owned Chinese company that was given permission to manufacture automobiles. Car production didn't actually begin in 2002, but they were the first privately owned company to get permission to do so. Geely had its IPO in 2004 on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, and since then it's been a steady march of research and development, improvement in manufacturing processes, quality, and acquisitions that have fueled the growth of this company. Company founder Li Shifu has been a very vocal opponent of fueling domestic innovation through native research and discovery rather than through acquisition of technologies from foreign sources. Despite these sentiments, however, since 2010, Geely's international growth has largely been accomplished through acquisitions and joint ventures. So let's talk about why they're important today and really why I'm making this video. Now, Geely already makes several electric vehicles across our brand portfolio, but on February 22nd, Li Shufu confirmed that Geely plans to set up a new all-electric vehicle company created to compete directly in the intelligent battery electric vehicle space. The new company is said to be located in the manufacturing hub of Hefei in Anhui province. This is the same location as their domestic rival, electric vehicle maker Neo. This confirmation comes on the heels of a series of stunning announcements from last month that largely flew under the radar in Western press. Last month, Geely announced a series of new strategic partnerships, one with struggling EV company Faraday Future, internet giant Baidu, Apple manufacturing partner Foxconn, and technology conglomerate Tencent. Geely has already developed its own open source EV platform that it plans to use across its brand portfolio. It's called the Sustainable Experience Architecture Platform, or its acronym is SEA or C for short. According to the press release, Geely hopes that the use of the open source C platform, coupled with software overlays provided by Baidu and Tencent, will give manufacturers who want to adopt the C platform, and by extension, of course, their customers, unrivaled connectivity, shared vehicle functions, e-motor capabilities, constant over-the-air updates that are going to keep their vehicle up to date and that lead to autonomous driving functions and will offer a maximum range of around 700 kilometers between charging with capacity to increase that range in the future. The whole idea, of course, is that synergies generated by architecture within the Geely Holdings automobile family are expected to reduce development costs with participating brands and it's going to help them generate substantial savings on research and development costs. This series of announcements is far more important than it might seem on the surface. In fact, this kind of baller business initiative is something that Li Shufu has been planning for quite some time. Now, I've been listening to Li Shufu's snippets of wisdom for quite some time as they come across in Western press, and while they're entertaining, I've always felt like there was something missing in translation, and I never really got the full meaning of what he was trying to express. But these recent announcements have really put things in perspective for me. As far back as 2012, I can find quotes of him criticizing the joint venture relationships that Chinese manufacturing firms have with Western original equipment manufacturers or OEMs, stating that it led to the stagnation in development of new manufacturing innovations and dependence on Western countries for new ideas and technologies. He made an assertion that the ultimate beneficiary of these joint ventures are really the foreign OEMs because rather than just being the OEM, they're also the solution providers. The manner and the frequency with which he spoke on this subject and the recent moves that he made with his company made me pretty curious about who his intellectual influences might have been during his university years and on his personal development of economic theory. He used quite a few phrases that I knew that I had heard before in academic literature, and so I did something that was pretty nerdy. I ran a search query on uh, where he went to university and the name Emmanuel Wallerstein. And sure enough, there were tons of academics and researchers from this university who have cited Wallerstein's work on world systems theory. Li Shufu would have been influenced in his formative years by a number of professors that were familiar with Wallerstein's view of the world divided into core and periphery states, with semi-periphery and periphery states in subordinate relationships with core economies. If you aren't familiar with world systems theory, it's really a whole separate video, but I'm going to give you a real quick rundown. Core countries focus on higher skill, capital intensive production, and periphery countries of the world focus on low skill, labor intensive production, and extraction of raw materials. 
This is an inherently unequal relationship that constantly reinforces the dominance of core countries since the system is really set up to benefit the core countries and to keep the periphery countries in subservient roles. Nonetheless, Wallerstein states that the system has dynamic characteristics. In part, as a result of revolutions in transport technology, you can see where I'm going here, and that individual states can gain or lose their core economy status over time. I think that this idea is probably still in the mind of Li Shufu, as it would be on the minds of many business magnates from his generation. The current joint venture arrangement that many Chinese automakers have with OEMs, be they American, European, or Japanese, are really an extension of this core periphery arrangement. But the EV revolution is providing an opportunity to radically change that dynamic by positioning Geely the way he has and with the $2.8 billion investment in the development of the Sustainable Experience Architecture electric vehicle platform, Li Shufu hopes that within a short period of time that they will be producing hundreds of thousands of electric vehicles in China based on this new platform and to soon have that electric vehicle platform deployed across the portfolio of Geely brands that include Volvo, Polestar, Lotus, London Electric Vehicle Company, Smart, Daimler, Lincoln Company, Geometry, Jidu, Maple, Farzion, and Proton. This is a lot of different brands, folks. I don't think that Geely's ambitions actually end there. I don't know if you recall, but I made an earlier video about the possibility of open source EV platforms eventually dominating the industry rather than having a thousand different companies all trying to develop their own vehicles and technology. I'm beginning to think that this thesis is likely to be correct in the end. The EV revolution may not proceed at all like any other revolutions in transportation have. Instead of seeing car brands and models battle for dominance in a crowded market, in the future, we might see a few platforms like the Geely C platform or Hyundai's EGMP platform and maybe a couple of others providing the basic backbone for every electric vehicle startup on the planet while strategic partnerships with technology firms provide software overlays. The new EV startups in some ways would really just become vehicle designers focused on aesthetics and driver experience. I don't even know how a world like that would play out in the investment world, but I think it would be interesting to find out. So look folks, Geely isn't just planning to make a bunch of EVs across the Geely portfolio. They wanna be the EV platform and solution provider for EV companies across the world. They essentially wanna be the EV manufacturer for the world. Anyway, folks, that's just a quick look at Geely today. Remember, this is just my opinion. This is not uh, instructions to buy, sell, or hold any security. Thanks again for watching, folks. I look forward to seeing you next time.